14. 14. March 14. 14th was yesterday. Uh, 2005. Eight. And Bob Eight. was in Dito's house. Yeah. That way, once Bob this thing is really ancient, Bob, how much you hear this thing? All the children <laughs> here. Except for Christian and Tim. <laughs> And they want to re and uh, they want to hear Dido's story. <laughs> story of Dido's life. Story of Dido's life, not not uh, complete. Because if I start uh, writing the story of, of life, it, <laughs> you would have to sit here all night. <laughs> sit here for eighty years. <laughs> yeah, but anyhow. <clears throat> so uh, here it is. Uh, I will uh, just like uh, I wrote, wrote for somebody to read. Bill was born in Ukraine in a small uh, village named Pliska in Ternopil, <coughs> Oblast, uh, that, that's county, where he finished uh, elementary school. Then he went to junior high in a small town of Bilozirka. <coughs> Eight kilometers he had to trot every more every morning and uh, to school for 8 a.m. classes till 3 p.m. Then back home. <coughs> school in Ukraine was uh, six days a week, and it was the same summer and winter. In winter, beginning December to January, to January, he uh, boarded uh, with some people close to school. Every Saturday after school, he went home and on Monday morning went back to school. <clears throat> it was a very tough uh, going, especially on rainy days. The road was uh, uh, through the fields and when it was raining, it was very muddy. But when you are young, everything is fun even in mud. No. Because you, there, we didn't have no roads, uh, you know, like here, uh, even to small towns, but up there it was just a field road from, from village to village. In April of 1939, he, uh, he got his final report as completed his uh, junior high. On 1st of May of 1939, the family emigrated to Canada. On 19th of May, they boarded uh, the last ship uh, from Gdynia, that's Polish port, <coughs> that uh, sailed uh, safe. The next ship was torpedoed with loss of many lives. On 3rd of June, they were in Quebec. From Quebec, they took the train to Edmonton, from Edmonton, uh, with a big uh, truck, they went to Rich Lake, 27 miles past Lake Labiche, where Dad's uh, friends Shumechuks lived, from where they uh, looked uh, for a farm. After a few days, uh, there, there was no uh, success around Rich Lake, so his, uh, so Dad went uh, to real estate in Edmonton. Agent by the name <coughs> of uh, Mr. Austri took him to Glenavis, where old couple, Mr. and Mrs. Lindquist, uh, were selling 160 acres farm together with lock, stock, and barrel. And uh, Dad uh, made a deal, and by end of June, they moved to their own new home in Canada. In farm <coughs> was included uh, three horses, two cows, two pigs, and, uh, and uh, a few chickens, and uh, most necessary farm machinery. So they felt quite well off, but the life in Canada uh, to start with was very lonely. In Ukraine, uh, in Pleska, they were active uh, church members and uh, participated in all village activities and, <clears throat> and uh, knew every single person in the village. At Glenavis, 
There was no church and they didn't know a single soul. In a short time they got to know Prokudas and uh, through them other people like Kremenyuks, Coltons, Bakowskis and other close uh, neighbors and uh, the life <coughs> began to look a bit brighter. In uh, September uh, Sister Nancy and Bill uh, started uh, school. It was very hard uh, not knowing a word of English and the Ukrainian kids would not speak uh, to them uh, uh, Ukrainian except for Earl Prokuda. He was our translator. After two years of school uh, I, <coughs> I went uh, uh, to work to Rosie's farm with Steve Kremenyuk. He worked there all, uh, all winter and in spring, uh, uh, quit uh, Rosie's farm and came home, came home. Uh, for the winters he went to Edmonton and worked meat packers or fox ranch and uh, other jobs. In 1946 he bought <coughs> a farm from his brother Boris. There was very little land open, but uh, the house was quite good, uh, <coughs> quite good. Uh, farming alone was miserable. Much work with very little profit. In May of 1947, his sister, uh, sister Nancy was getting married uh, to Dick Voyevoda and the uh, reception in his house because uh, there was much more room than in his dad's house. Everything was uh, prepared according to Ukrainian tradition. Bill was to meet uh, and to welcome uh, the newlyweds with uh, with bread, salt, and glass of water. When the wedding cars uh, drove into the yard and the wedding party came out, Bill noticed a gorgeous young... <laughs> 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 young uh, bridesmaids, Lida, uh, uh, groom sister. You... <clears throat> You see, he, he knew of, uh, of Groom's uh, sister, but uh, he never seen her for about four years. He was so excited that he spilled the water and salt and uh, completely forgot the greetings uh, he supposed to uh, convey to, to bride and groom. That was the law of first sight. So, rest of the wedding it was like tug of war in his uh, mind. Is there any chance to, uh, to win her over uh, or forget? Forget, you are uh, dreaming. Uh, she went uh, to the city to get education and find uh, some good uh, career. And who, who, who are you? Just a poor farmer. Uh, an immigrant to, uh, to boot. <laughs> I have two books here, so I have to skip some and... Okay, I can start from... You see, I, I used, I wrote some of these uh, notes and then I forgot about them. And then when you asked to write, I start writing and then I found this and I thought to myself, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, I... <clears throat> but as they say, <clears throat> where is life, there is hope. The, uh, the biggest uh, problem was that I always felt that I was of, uh, in, uh, uh, in lower standard and uh, belittled myself. The girl is blessed with uh, beauty, uh, schooling in the city, uh, uh, tasted the city life. So how would she consent to, to an ordinary poor farmer? 
and uh, the Im immigrant to boot. I, I wrote that's uh, different writing. Nevertheless, the wheels started uh, started in motion. The opportunity to visit Voivoda's uh, home was there. My sister Nancy was living there. So when the road was dry, I paddled uh, my bike uh, through the bush for uh, approximately six miles trip. But uh, when it was raining and muddy, uh, road, muddy road, my old gray mare did the honors. So uh, the uh, courtship, if you call called that, uh, it was uh, uh, lasted till the end of August of 1947. You didn't say that you fell off the horse after got married and had to wash your underwear. <laughs> 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 you get in the story, you might get there, yeah. <laughs> after after par parents bickering about uh, which uh, church we they should be married in and a few other uh, 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 others. Um, finally, the wedding was set for August the 30th, uh, 47. Marriage took place in Greek Orthodox Church in Edmonton. Uh, on uh, 96th Street. Uh, by the river as they uh, called it. After the church, we returned to Voivoda farm where we had a small uh, or ordinary farm wedding. The weather was rainy and wet and roads muddy and full of uh, deep ruts. So most of the city folks stayed in the farm farmhouse uh, for the night including bride and groom. Of course, there was no uh, beds for everyone, so a whole bunch of us uh, slept on the floor, uh, packed like sardines, as I, <laughs> as I uh, remember uh, correct, there, there was uh, not much uh, sleeping that night. <laughs> Next day, everyone packed uh, into uh, the box of John Golinski's truck and came uh, to my farm and uh, that was the beginning of Lida's and Bill's married life. Of course, <clears throat> we like everyone uh, else uh, had to uh, start from the beginning. Beginning. I had 160 acres farm on which was approximately 15 acres open land. And for the money we received uh, <clears throat> from the wedding gifts, we decided to clear some bush for income to live on. Uh, on uh, I had four milk cows and some young uh, stock, and Lida received as a uh, dowry two cows and two heifers. I also had uh, uh, some sheep and three horses, a few chickens, uh, a few chickens. Since uh, there there was uh, only two small uh, log barns on on the f on a place that uh, fall I built another barn for eight head of, of cattle, which in spring burned down with all the all the uh, horse uh, harnesses and where almost uh, and where almost perished an old man Kowalczuk who visited us uh, periodically on the way uh, from gun center when i <clears throat> arrived home from the field all i could uh, see uh, left uh, from the barn was pile of smoldering ashes. Mm. That really hit me hard, but the life goes on. That summer <clears throat> of 1948, I made some hay on uh, a share at Charles Thompson's farm. As we uh, talked one day, he mentioned about selling his farm. That night, uh, we talked uh, with Lida
and uh, wondered if Charles would uh, trade his farm with us. His farm was too big uh, for him, uh, <clears throat> harder to get out when it was uh, muddy uh, or uh, too much snow and uh, our farm uh, not much uh, open land, the house uh, newly decorated, nice and clean and much closer and uh, easier to get uh, uh, for Charlie uh, uh, to hotel in Cher Hill. The deal was made. We traded the farms by uh, uh, paying Charles uh, $4,000 uh, to boot by, that's, uh, we, to boot to our farm by yearly payments uh, of 4% uh, interest. That was not bad. Before we moved uh, to uh, Thompson's place, our first baby, Diana, was born. She was the most beautiful baby on earth. It was uh, 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 August the 3rd, 1948. She made us so happy as she was the first grandchild in Johanchuk family. Then, by the end of October, we moved to our new farm. The house was big, two-story, but uh, awfully cold in winter. There was a big barn uh, and many other buildings, and most of the farm was open land. Now we were able to raise more cattle and sheep as, uh, as we had buildings uh, for stock and, uh, and, and a lot of hay uh, for feed. In 1951, we were blessed uh, with uh, the second daughter, Anita. She also was a beautiful baby. Uh, the good Lord was good to, to us. We had nice farm, plenty of hay, and grain, and the, <clears throat> and the herd was growing, and and work was as workload as well. Yeah. I enjoyed <clears throat> uh, wheeling and dealing with the neighbors. One of them was Mrs. Davis. We traded ho horses, cows, pigs, goats, and whatever. <laughs> One day, uh, she asked me if I would uh, be interested in buying her Pasco's place, which was only two miles south uh, of our farm. If I remember uh, correct, we bought that farm for uh, $1,200. As the time <coughs> passed by, uh, the things uh, changed. The children were growing and the uh, uh, country uh, Closed uh, uh, and the uh, county closed temporary school where our kids were to go uh, to go to school. In the in the meantime, Boris asked if I uh, could be interested in a half share uh, of garage he was buying in Glenavis. Thinking about children being close to school we decided to, uh, to go for garage. Brother Harry was buying our farm. <coughs> After we moved to Glenavis, Harry backed out from buying at the farm. So we were stuck with uh, that on garage and, and the farm. The garage business was very slow, and the partnership was very unpredict and pro unpromising. It was obvious that it was never work; it will never work out. At that time, Frank Gully was selling his farm, which was next to Pasco's place. We all we already had, so we bought Gully's farm and split up uh, with Boris. Uh, he had a garage, an old house, and we took the new house 
that used to be a, a coffee shop. In 1955, we moved to Gulli's place. And now, <coughs> we were selling house at Glenavis and farm, farm Thompson's place. That winter, we sold the house to Coltis and the farm to Bill Latimer. On January 14, 1956, uh, our son Joe was born. What a big surprise, right on my birthday. Now <coughs> we had two girls and a boy. That, what a joy. That year, uh, the power came to Glenavis, uh, which I wanted in a worst way. The problem was, the problem, no money. So I decided to go to, to the city and make uh, enough uh, for, for the power and return uh, to the farm. In 1st of May of uh, 57, I got a job at Alberta Hospital. I worked there all summer, but to stay there uh, through the winter, I had to take psychiatric nursing training. After deciding to stay uh, through the winter, we made an uh, auction sale on the farm and put down payment on a house in Beverly and moved the family to the city. It was fairly new <coughs> two-bedroom home, close to school, but it was little too far uh, from Oliver's uh, bus route, so I looked closer to, to bus uh, route uh, and uh, found a house uh, on 68th Street, close to Fort Road. It was very handy to my work and uh, uh, close to school, uh, close to school. The house uh, was quite new, a three bedroom with a detached garage. garage. It was in 1959, when we <coughs> moved into that uh, home, in 1960, Veronica was born, another beautiful baby a girl. It was hard uh, for me to see these beautiful babies uh, growing up and me having so little time to play with them, as I was uh, either busy either busy uh, studying psychiatric nursing or on, uh, on, or on days off uh, helping John Golinski with the uh, building. My wages at the uh, hospital were $210 a month. And with four kids and a house mortgage, every extra dollar, uh, uh, dollar helped. In 1961, I graduated from School of Nursing. Now, the job was uh, more uh, sure, but I was more restless. I wanted to get out of the city, so every day at work, I scanned uh, the journal, looking for some land. That was uh, close to my uh, uh, job. Sure enough, one day I uh, spotted 80 acres for sale just across the road from Oliver, Oliver's poultry farm. That was 80 acres with no buildings. The problem was Lida was expecting another baby and we needed a house. So we started uh, negotiating with Mrs. Dick Mrs. Dick was the one that we are trading uh, the acreage for the house. About uh, trading our house uh, in the city for 80 acres, acres. We did made a trade. Then I started to look for builders uh, to build a house. That was 1962, and on 20th of uh, April, Christina was born. Poor little angel had the, the roughest of, of, uh, of the children. She was born in the midst of all the commotion, trading, building, working 
in the night shift and working on the house during uh, the day. No wonder Lida uh, became quite ill. We sort of uh, <clears throat> were finishing house ourselves, like uh, hiring plumbers, uh, digging well, putting in uh, sewers, uh, painting the house, and all that was uh, very hard as we had uh, to move before the house was uh, completely finished. At first, the water was uh, not uh, connected, and to use the <coughs> toilet, we had to use the, uh, the sewer ditch. <coughs> Next spring, we uh, brought uh, our two cows from Glenavis that we left on, on the farm with Boris as he bought our farm the next spring after we moved, moved out. <clears throat> we had no, bar, no barn uh, or uh, fences, so we kept the cows at Felton's place with uh, his cattle. Then we bought a garage in city for the, for the barn. After much hard work, we finally settled down. Children